What a mess the pricing is this month. It's certainly got me confused. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. And we're looking at April EV charging prices in the UK. There are several new entrants and significant price changes to cover. So let's leap straight into the UK's dearest charging, Shell Recharge. Well, there's no change in the advertised price per kilowatt hour. Still 79p for 50 kilowatt and 85p for 175. So easily the dearest in the UK. But their claim to be the biggest is being challenged. They claim 384 quarts filled with fast, rapid and ultra rapid chargers. Well, no argument here. But also claim 300,000 others. Well, they haven't. They're just links to other providers like Ionity, Instavolt, Podpoint, etc. But use their app and you're likely to pay their top rate 85p per kilowatt hour on low level 50 kilowatt units. This is seriously misleading. Advertising standards may want to look at this. Well, BP Pulse unfortunately also confuses me. Good news, there are some new 150 kilowatt charges appearing in the forecourts. Bad news, the website claims prices start from 55p, also states that most 50 kilowatt charges are now 57p and all 150 kilowatt. But the mobile app shows 77p. A physical visit to several of their 50 kilowatt charges still finds the 79p on the start screen. Their full membership rate is shown as having dropped from 69p in March to 63p in April. Come on, BP, this is confusing. But despite this, the best value appears to be joining their full membership, as reported last month. Despite a £7.95 a month fee, the first month is not charged and you get a £9 credit for the next five months. So it costs you £47.70 and you get a £45 credit. You also get 20% discount off their pay-as-you-go rates, not their full membership rates, meaning 62 pence per kilowatt hour during the six months, rising to just 63p when that ends, and you continue to pay 70, 7, 7.95 a month. If you charge here several times a month, the membership might be worth having even after the credit deal expires. Ionity are the only network to have made a significant price increase, up from March's 69p to April's 74p a rise of just under 10%. This should be offset by the fact that most of the charges are amazing 350 kilowatt units, but check out our video on charging speeds being, being released shortly. Subscribe so you don't miss it, where we arrive at all the listed charges in this video with the same EV at the same state of charge and plug in. The results surprised us. Could save you a wasted trip. Instavolt sees no change in pricing, still 69 per kilowatt hour. I have noticed there seems to be a bit of a deterioration in reliability. I experienced this twice firsthand over Easter, once locally and once in Carlisle. This is the subject of another video detailing my experience and my subsequent contact with Instavolt. I expected much better. Tesla have included them on their list of available charges and did set minimum reliability standards. Failing to meet them will result in them being removed from the Tesla app. Watch out. Osprey also remains unchanged, also at an expensive 79p, and few new charges appear to have been installed. Nothing much to say. MFG Trading as EV Power also remains unchanged, also at 79p, but a closer look on a recent visit shows this is misleading. The CCS charges are all listed as 150 kilowatt charges, but the plate on the actual unit states 150 kilowatts only with 920 volt batteries. The 400 volt batteries, which most EVs and all Teslas have, only get 100 kilowatt. Disappointing also to see at least one charger still not working from last month. Well, as a newcomer, Fastned is based mainly in the northeast, but also has charges in Scotland and a few down in the southeast, spreading outwards slowly, already very big in Europe. And this looks a great business model. They are installing some really nice high power chargers. The first map shows all chargers, the second map only those over 150 kilowatt. These are either 175 or 300 kilowatts, and a good number are being installed at each location too. Prices are 69p per kilowatt hour, making them a good value location if you're near one. Better still, join as a member and pay 9.99 per month, but get 30% off prices, 
making charging here just 49p per kilowatt hour. Probably the best non-Tesla price in the UK. Well, GridServe keeps growing, keeps upgrading their existing chargers and adding new ones, and keeps building hubs. The latest at Gatwick with 36 high power and ultra high power chargers is due to open third quarter this year. Prices remain on chains of very reasonable 65p for rapid, 66 for ultra rapid and 64 for all chargers at all of their hubs. If you're near a hub, it's well worth a visit as the layout, facilities and atmosphere make charging there quite enjoyable. Forget the old five minute fill up with petrol standing over your car on a forecourt in the wind and the rain. Here you can enjoy a coffee, snack or meal while your car charges. Much more civilised. Also, you can look at other EV models and even test drive them if you're thinking of changing. A full video of these hubs will be out early next month. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Tesla have introduced a multi-tier charging structure to most superchargers, as reported in my Easter update, offering several different prices at different times of the day. A T-based supercharger on the M6 in Cumbria, that now includes a half-price offer, 29p between 10pm and 4am. They also have opened a new uh, number of new superchargers, including two which suit me specially. One in Swansea with 12 250 kilowatt V3s, where I visit family regularly, and one in Exeter M5 services with 16 250 kilowatt V3s. That's useful on my frequent trips to Cornwall, also for family. Also of note, Tesla's just opened the first of the V4 chargers in the Netherlands at Harderwich. The stated power is 350 kilowatt, but many believe these are actually 500 kilowatt units throttled back to just 350. Either way, these are very fast, very powerful chargers. And while giving no advantage to most current Teslas, which are, at the moment, limited to 250 kilowatt charging rate, they show the potential for blistering charging speeds in future Tesla models upgraded to take the full 350 or 500 kilowatt. Makes me wonder if a Model S can already add 200 miles in just 15 minutes on a 250 kilowatt charger. What can it do when connected to one of these new beasts? Are we getting closer to the proverbial five minute fill up? Or well, Genie Point, Charge Point, Pod Point, group of others, they're all still hanging in there. They don't appear to be advertising, they're not building new chargers. Nothing much seems to be happening, nothing changes, but the charges are being serviced and a good number are still operable. They too seem to have split the rates with 8am to 8pm at around 70p and overnight 8pm to 8am at 57p. Ah, not bad rates if you can find one. Well, if you don't have home charging, have a look at your local supermarkets. Most have type two slow chargers around seven kilowatts. Most are in the 20 to 40 P range and most have no parking restrictions. My local Tesco has seven kilowatt chargers at 40 pence a kilowatt hour and is located about half a mile away. If I didn't charge at home and didn't want to drive to a supercharger, I'd definitely plug in here, walk out and leave my car on charge overnight and pick it up first thing in the morning. Some even offer free charging all day on Sundays. I see several delivery vans taking advantage of this locally. There are far too many newcomers to list them all here. Some very local like Westmoreland Charging who are opening four new ultra rapid non-Tesla chargers at T-Bay services. Charging really is expanding rapidly. Nowhere near good enough yet. As these smaller ones become significant, I'll add them to the list. I was also taken to task over not covering all four countries that make up the UK. Well, while the big national charges are present in all four countries, I accept that criticism and will be adding short special edition videos for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland each month. Also, well advanced in two new video series, the first mentioned above covers actual charging speeds versus speeds advertised on the chargers and the apps. And the second looks at availability, reliability and the various companies' responses when a fault is reported at the site and the response when I follow up with a later phone call. These are not yet complete, but initial results are quite frightening. 
if you travel specifically to a particular charger because it has a faster rated speed, if it's not working or only giving 20% of the rated power, you're going to be wasting your time. Well, thanks for watching so far. I hope you find this informative and it helps you get a better charging experience.